imagine. You're a child in 1664. Some adults in your life take you in the middle of the night, riding backwards on the donkey to a strange island. There you enter a large house and it's bustling with people. It's a giant banquet and partying. You notice that people are dancing backwards. All the adults seem to be feasting on something extremely tasty, but you can tell that it's actually made of toads and snakes and insects. As everyone sits cheering, laughing and seemingly having a wonderful time. Suddenly a horned devil walks in, also in quite a good mood. He grabs both women and men and kisses them, holds them, but sometimes he hits them and mocks them. The whole party soon erupts into a big fight, everyone's swearing and you can't tell, but they walk with the devil into another room. The weirdest part you remember afterwards as you're telling the local priest all of this. There was an angel lighting up the entire banquet hall. And he was walking around, pushing food out of everyone's plates. This is actually a true story from a child in, this, in Sweden in the 1600s. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. Hi and welcome to another video here on my channel Morbid History. Today as you can tell I am dressed up for the occasion. This was actually going to be a video that I uploaded last Thursday when Easter began on Skärtorsdag, as we say in Sweden, which uh, I think in English is um, Holy Thursday. And the events we're going to talk about usually happen between Holy Thursday and Good Friday. So yeah, let's get straight into it. Also, yeah, I'm dressed as the devil. <laughs> this is an outfit I actually got from my wish list. I have like some cosplay and stuff like that there too, and it's always fun to dress up for videos. So thank you, my 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 friend and benefactor for supporting. So yeah, today we're gonna talk about blå kulla which translates into blue hill. The word blue though, during these ages, uh, most of the information I've gathered is from the 1600s. Um, blue actually meant svart, which is black. So it could also translate into black hill. And this was the place in Swedish folklore where the witches went for their which is Sabbath, where they had their giant party with the devil. And we're gonna go uh, straight into that, but first just a short history as to why I have these witness accounts that I'm gonna tell. I've actually already made a video uh, talking more in depth about this time in Swedish history. It was the 1660s and uh, it was the beginning of the great witch mass hysteria in Swedish history. 
It all started with a young girl called Gertrud. I'm gonna link the video here if you wanna see like a, a deeper look into all that. But we're not. I'm just gonna go through it fairly quickly. Gertrud was a young girl and uh, she was out herding sheep with her younger brother. They were sitting eating bread, like having a little break, and suddenly they realized that their goats and sheep had wandered off into a little island out on a, on a big lake. Gertrude, being bigger and stronger, took it upon herself to walk out and get them. Her little brother got a bit like upset or got um, felt that it would hurt his pride that he wasn't the one who did it. So when he got home to his dad, he didn't want to say like, oh no, I'm too small and, and Gertrude had to do everything. So he just said that she had done it with the help of magic. Of course, this is the 1600s. He said that Satan himself had helped her walk on water so she could bring them back. And this started an entire chain reaction. The children of this little village started gossiping and telling each other stories about how they too had met Satan. How? This is very important for the rest of the story. Children, of course, they didn't have computers or anything like any phones to distract them during these ages. So during the evening, they would all sit or stand in a circle and discuss all the things that had happened to them during the night. Uh, some adult in their life had taken them and walked with them someplace deep in the woods and there Satan had popped up and like uh, helped them get to uh, Blåkulla. And after all these rumors started getting bigger and bigger and the adults started hearing what the children were saying, like their stories just got like bigger and weirder because of course they're trying to one-up each other in all this. Um, there were, of course, a few priests there that decided to take this into their own hands because now it was certain that there were witches taking these innocent children in the night and just whisking them away to Satan. They were having none of that. For this story, we have one priest, and that was Elavus Skragge, and he wrote eyewitness accounts from the children and what they told him. He just put together the stories from the trials and just their like one-on-one um, -on -one confession times. So thanks to that, we do have uh, quite a bit of knowledge into these stories. We could categorize them into folklore because that was actually what it was, of course. There's no witches and there's no Satan looming in a little island over in, outside of Sweden. But that's what they believed in, at least. So we can say that, of course, this was the beginning of one of the darkest moments in Swedish history. The great mass hysteria. The like hundreds of Swedish women and men lost their lives uh, because people thought that they were witches. Not fun. But we're not going to talk about that today. That was just like the intro to why we have the information that I'm gonna tell you today. So, from the beginning, what is Blåkulla? Blåkulla was 
said to be an island situated out on a big dark sea. On the island there was a big meadow and of course Satan's large fancy house where he had his parties. Witches would always bring along children because Satan demanded it. Uh, and there, of course, they had these um, big feasts and dances and parties, you could say, of course, and um, they were usually described as like a big farmer's wedding, because this is, of course, the fanciest uh, a peasant during these ages could uh, imagine anything to be. And the usual time of year that the witches flew over to Blåkulla was actually during Skärtorstan or Holy Thursday. During these days of Easter, it was thought that Jesus and Christianity's power was lessened. Because, of course, Jesus was about to die on the cross, so the door to evil was more open than usual. So they actually went there to celebrate Jesus' Jesus' death <laughs> instead of the opposite as they do in the Christian church. Doing everything backwards is a kind of a, a ongoing theme here. I'm gonna get get to that later, but yeah, how did they get to Blåkulla is also a question, of course. Usually when you think of witches, they fly on, on their brooms somewhere, and that's like an image we have all over the world, of course. Um, the Swedish the sw <laughs> the Swedish witches, though, uh, they had usually gotten some kind of uh, cream from Satan. Uh, this cream they used to... Um, this cream they used to like smear upon anything they wanted to use to fly. There's accounts of them using uh, goats, cows, horses, um, even a priest at one time, and uh, a mayor. I think the priest was in many of, of, of the children's stories for some reason, so Poor, poor priest must have had uh, a terrible backache after all this. And not only did they like just ride on them, they had to ride on them like upside down and backwards. Like I said, backwards is a big theme. They did everything backwards. So yeah, they rode them there. Uh, if they didn't have enough space for all the children that they wanted to bring along because uh, yeah, they, they, many children, thank you, Satan says. They would poke a like, rod or a stake into the backside of uh, whatever they were riding and make more space, of course, for children to sit upon on their way to Blokula. Yeah. So, after they gone over this large ocean and set their sights on this creepy little island out uh, in nowhere, they land and walk through a large meadow. I'm gonna read an English translation now of how this entire place would have looked like. They confessed that Bloakulla is situated in a delicate large meadow, whereof you can see no end. The place or house they meet at had before it a gate painted in diverse colors. Through this gate they went into a little meadow distinct from the other, where the beasts went that they used to ride on. The men whom they made use of on their journey stood in the house by the gate in a slumbering posture, sleeping against the wall. In a huge, large room of this house, they said, there stood a very long table at which the witches did sit down. 
and that hard by this room was another chamber where they were very lovely and delicate beds. So yeah, that was an English translation that I found of the writings of Elavus Grage that he wrote in the 1670s um, after hearing all of these children's descriptions of Blokula. The devil himself was uh, of course there and he was besides being the devil <laughs> pretty fancily dressed the children said they said the devil was dressed in a gray coat red and blue stockings he had a red beard and a high crowned hat with linen of diverse colors wrapped around it and long garters upon his stockings. So yeah, he was a fashionable devil. So yeah, now that we have an idea of how to get to Blåkulla, what Blåkulla looked like, we need to get into the juicy parts. What happened at Blåkulla? Well, First thing when you arrive, of course, you have to sign away your soul to Satan. So he had this big, large guest book, if, if you want to call it that. Um, and he prompted you to cut your finger and sign a lot away your life and soul into the book with your blood. After you did this, he would give you a new name which was usually a swear word or something blasphemous. Um, the examples I found was like stigging and uh, guda död. Just these examples. They even told the children to do that, of course, uh, so that their lives would be his. I guess that's why he wanted all the children to come there, so. The more the merrier. <laughs> and here we come to the part where everything was backwards. Uh, the devil, they, they said that instead of preaching goodness and kindness as they do in, in the Christian church, the devil was preaching evil, they were singing songs about the devil, Satan, and uh, not only that, like I said before, everyone danced backwards and um, with their backs turned to each other. And uh, beyond that, of course, since it was a big party celebration of Jesus' death, they uh, had this large feast. They had uh, dancing and everything usually just erupted into lots of swearing and fighting and uh, the devil would uh, take some of them and whip them until they couldn't walk but then he healed them again and he laughed and laughed and thought this was so funny um, and I guess everyone thought that too because why would they go there all the time maybe they were just sadomasochistic the whole bunch who knows I'm not here to judge and during all of this, of course, there were lots of children there just watching. <laughs> um, sadly enough, the, the children even told that they would see them do adulty stuff. There were orgies and stuff. But um, sometimes, uh, though, the devil would take the, the women or men into his room with his large bed and do his thing there. Also to note that uh, the women that did confess to fornication with the devil um, said that it was no nothing special. <laughs> nothing special at all, except that he was cold to the touch. Satan would of course make use of the children there and have them marry his ugly sons and presumably daughters. Uh, there was one child in all these um, confessions and testimonies that said that she had been widowed several times after marrying the devil's ugly sons. Great imagination on these kids. 
And like I said, one of the strangest parts, uh, the children said that inside of the devil's house, for some reason, there was a church, like a Christian church, a small one, uh, illuminating um, bright light. And out of this church came angels that walked through the feast and partying and tried to like entice the children into the church and away from Satan. And they would forcefully push the food off of everyone's plates. Sadly, there's not a lot of information about that. Um, that's that's, that's kind of like it. They were there and they pushed food off of their plates. Yeah. So yeah, that's kind of basically it. A lot of devil kissing, orgies, dancing, canoodling with everyone, eating toads that they think are food. And also, the devil showed, at least the children, a big hole in the floor of one of his rooms. And down there they could see straight down to hell. And there was a dragon in chains. And he had told the children that anyone that speaks about Bloakulla with a priest or the church would end up down there and the dragon would eat them. But, of course, as we heard, that did not deter these children from blabbing on and, in turn, killing hundreds and hundreds of innocent people in uh, the Great Noise, as it's called. Stora Oväsendet. Biggest mass hysteria in Sweden. Where we burned plenty of witches, mainly from child testimonies. <laughs> so yeah, that's basically it from today's episode. Uh, oh, I'm strangling myself. <laughs> um, yeah, that's it from today's video. I hope you liked it. And um, and if you like this content, please, 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 please like and subscribe and comment. I love your comments. Comments, yay! They brighten my day. If you want to see more of me, I have Patreon. I upload extra content there, like vlogs and whatever. Um, a few times a week, actually. Uh, pretty often. And if you just want to donate, I'm actually going away on a trip to Edinburgh, so look forward to that. I'm going to make an episode there. Uh, so if you want to donate um, in support of my content, I have a Ko-fi. I'm going to link Patreon and Ko-fi down there. I also have a new wish list. I'm going to link it down there too. So. Uh, but yeah, thanks for the consideration. And... Uh, now and now i'm gonna thank all my beautiful patrons here they are thank you 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 if you really like my content i'm just gonna say that in um uh, in May, I'm going to Edinburgh and I'm gonna post a lot of vlogs during that month on my Patreon. So yeah, there's gonna be graveyards and museums and scary museums and then yeah, there's gonna be, oops, there's gonna be lots of content over there. I, I, I'm gonna try to make like a, an episode for here too, of course. Either way. Thanks for watching and I hope you stick around till the next one. You're all the best. Mm, kisses. And hugs.
Till next time.